Remember in this video series, we are following this kit here, which you can buy from modmypie.com. So head over to their website. The full link to buy this is in the description of this video. So this is video four. And in this video, we're going to introduce um, a tactile push button. So we can actually press a button and in the physical world and see something happen in our software. And we have a script called for underscore button dot py. And this, uh, we're now going to explain how this code functions. Before we do that, we need to understand a little bit about the electronics and actually get this set up so we can do this. We can see that we've got a single wire going from our Raspberry Pi. Um, and that is what, one, two, three, four pins. So it's one, two, three, four. That's GPIO pin 10. It comes down to our tactile switch. This is our push button and there's our resistor. So inside of this tactile push button, we have the four pins here, 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 and here. And the two top pins are connected together and the two bottom pins are connected together, but the top and the bottom rows are not connected, they are switched. So when we push the button, there's um, a contact made between this pin and here, and electricity can flow from these two pins through to these two pins here, and that's what makes the actual circuit. We notice that we uh, our pin goes from the Raspberry Pi um, to our switch, and in between our switch we have our resistor, which goes to our um, live wire, uh, our 3.3 volt, and the other side, the other pin, the ground, goes to the ground pin, and that's how we wire this up. Just a quick run through of how you wire this up. You take your uh, tactile switch and you bridge it across the two major sort of sections in the middle. You then grab your resistor and you connect um, one of the top left-hand rails to the positive um, rail at the bottom there. Um, we then take our um, ground wire and connect that to the bottom right-hand pin. And then our top left-hand pin goes to the um, GPIO, I think it's 10 um, bits in the diagram. So in this lesson, we're going to learn a bit more about Python and we're going to introduce the idea of flow control. Um, and um, if statements and else statements. So this is the idea that you have code and you say, if this happens, then do this, or in programming terms, you say, if do this, else, so otherwise do something else. So here is the, the full code that's needed to program um, the push button. We have all the normal stuff you would have been hopefully familiar with if you've been watching the previous videos, which sets up um, the basics of um, the code and puts all of the GPIO pins in the right status. You'll notice that um, for once this GPIO um, pin is actually in an in state as opposed to an output state. So all the previous videos we've been output into a LED, we're now receiving an input. So print to the screen um, GPIO plus, um, or button plus GPIO. And uh, you'll notice that we imported an, a new library, a new module called OS. And this allows you to run commands um, within Python code that you would normally run in the operating system. This might be things like PWD to collect uh, the path of the directory you're in, um, or ls, or in this instance we're going to use the date command to print the date to the screen when the button is pushed. That's the aim of what we're going to do. So um, the first thing that happens when the code runs, it will print the current status of the GPIO pin. Um, it'll tell you what status it is in. We then have a, another while loop. Previously, we used while one colon to create an, uh, uh, an infinite while loop. Um, but using while true colon is just another way of creating that infinite while loop. So we go into our first if statement, which is our first condition. And um, what we basically have here, here's an example of what an if statement would look like. You could say if um, one is smaller than two, or two is greater than one, and a colon at the end of it to finish the statement, then print yes, two is greater than one. So that's how a simple if statement would work. So in this instance, what we're saying is, if GPIO input, and we have double, e uh, double equals, which actually means um, is equal. So if GPIO input equals um, false, then print um, the, that the button has been pressed. And then what it does is it will call the um, os.system library that we, we, we imported here, and it will print the command in between the brackets, so we can use any command we want. You could change that for anything you wanted, but we're just gonna use the date command for now. And you, um, so you press the button, it calls this system command, and it says date. And what it'll do is it'll 
and it will print the date to the screen whenever you press the button. Then what it will do is it will print the current status of our um, button. So you, what you should see is it, it will be different to um, what it was here. And um, then it will sleep for um, five seconds. Um, and then what will happen is um, if a button hasn't been pressed, so it will just shoot straight over that statement. So it comes along and says, is GPIO um, input status equal to, to false? If it is not, it will just jump down to else. And then what it will do is it will say um, os.system clear, which all that does is it just wipes the screen of anything that's on it. And then it will print to the um, screen, print waiting for you to press a button, and then it will sleep for one second, and then it will back up to the while loop, and it will continue to do that forever until um, we exit out of the code. So let's see what that looks like in the real world. Okay, so we go to our directory with all of our code in, and we select four underscore button dot py, which is the code we were just exploring. Um, and then we run the command sudo python four underscore button dot py. Um, and then that will um, basically start the code, and we should enter into our while loop, which will continue over and over and over again. So it says press a button, press a button, press a button. So we do exactly that, we press the button and you'll see that it will print to the screen um, the current date and time. And it will then say press a button, press a button. And again, press the button. And if you do control C, it will exit out of the code. Now these video tutorials can be a little bit limited based on the time we have available. Um, so if you want to learn a bit more about flow control and um, programming with a lot more examples to give you much better input, I recommend you head over to Code Academy um, and go on their Python track and this is a great complimentary interactive website to go alongside these videos to help you understand the programming and the Python in a bit more detail. So to get updates on this channel, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel.